good morning, everyone. I think that we will wait around 20 minutes uh, for other participants. Uh, can you hear my voice clearly? Dr. Pansha, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, good morning. Yes. Thank you very so, much. So we will have a discussion at the end, right? The who, who will be the host? Can you? Thank you, Mira. Yes. Uh, Dr. Mansha, can you please uh, speak uh, louder a bit? Because, oh, oh, okay, uh, probably the screen is a little bit far away. Oh, okay. Okay, now now, now, now it's better. Okay, we'll move it a little bit closer. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I will check uh, participant uh, just a second. Now we have the eight participants. Hello, uh, and if it's if it's possible, if uh you can you can uh turn on your camera, it's it's gonna be great. Um, so before we are uh let uh thank you and good morning everyone and it is very nice to meet you all again today. This is the last day of the international training course on development of agricultural resilience capacity through water management with climate smart irrigation system. So for during these two weeks, there were many interesting topics that I hope that you can apply and use it in the future. Before we start with the wrap up uh, session for all the topic that we already uh, study or we already learned about it, I would like to em emphasize two things uh, for all of you. The first one that is, Please, you need to fill the evaluation form that I will send the link to you via chat box. So please fill up the e evaluation form and submit it. The second one that is you need to submit all the tests. All the tests already posted in the Google Classroom. So maybe just like at uh, the end of the day, maybe tomorrow or maybe tomorrow, Please uh, look to the Google Classroom and submit all the tests. And so how about the certification? The certification of this course will be sent it to you via email within one week after the organizing team checking the evaluation form and the test of all participants. So that's, uh, that's why I emphasize all of you to submit the evaluation form and submit all the tests. And uh, another thing that is for your information, also in the future, we will arrange this course on site that participants will have opportunity to visit the few sites that should be interesting for our view. So if you have people working in this field and this area, and if you found out that this course is interesting, or you are interested to join us again, please keep in touch with the Taika website. So now it's time for the wrap up session. It's a great honor for me to welcome Associated Professor Dr. Ben Shah from you. And I know that you, you, all of you uh, already met Dr. Ben Shah. Let me introduce Dr. Ben Shah a bit there. Dr. Ben Shah from you uh, is a faculty member of Irrigation Engineering Department. He's expertise in water management and has a lot of experiences in water resources area. So now he is the member of the National Water Resources Committee of Thailand. So let's start with uh with the wrap up sessions. Please welcome Dr. Bansha from you. Uh, please, Dr. Bansha. Okay. Good morning, everybody. You know, it's uh, I think you have learned a lot. You know, in the last two weeks, you know, on this training course, and hopefully today I will give you some kind of a summary, you know, of the uh, courses that we have been conduct, you know, uh, probably it will be about eight of them, you know, the first week you have about five topics and the second week you have about three topics of them. And I will also add up something, you know, to connect them together and maybe some of my comment at the end and of course at the uh, end discussion you know if you have uh, any 
as I think you would like to discuss or maybe learn more or want to exchange, uh, I will be with you maybe up to let's say 11.30, you know, after that I have some kind of mission, you know, okay, let's start kind of things. Okay, that will be okay. So let me start with, you know, I will share with you the uh, presentation, probably I already handed to Dr. Kevra, he will put that in the Dropbox for you to download in that case. Okay, let's have a look, you know, at this, okay. So we change the okay. We can see the slide. Okay. So this uh wrap up session, you know, first of all, let's have a look at the objectives of this uh, training. You know, we have uh, three main objectives. First one, we uh Dr. Warwood have introduced the irrigation development and water management. Uh, that will be very brief because hopefully most of you will be in this area and you most of, um, maybe some of you are not, but it seems to be good enough to understand about uh, what important for the crop in, the, in terms of uh, supplying, you know, uh, irrigated water. And of course you have three successive uh, lecture you know, all discussion, you know, some on climate change by Dr. Gebra, and you also you have a uh, discussion on the greenhouse gas emission, you know, uh, also the lesbian in climate change, that is about, you know, some discussion about two of them, and we have a lot extensive on water management, smart farming, using kind of IoT remote sensing, and some of the modern irrigation system. Of course, you know, uh, this one introduced you to the uh, high technology, but at the same time, you know, something more simple on the water management. Maybe I have already discussed with you and even today on the wrap up, I can discuss with you that we can go from, you know, something that not is some kind of techniques, but doesn't do much of the technology, you know, in terms of water management, or you can go to really advanced, you know, kind of uh, robotic, or you kind of use of a uh, uh, drone, or the, but it doesn't have to be the case, you know, you can use some simple method, you know. So at the end, I will add up something that maybe you have heard in the last maybe five or 10 years that it will be really challenging right now, especially in the country where water is really insufficient. You know, you know, that is the topic of the, let me say it is called is the deficit irrigation. Maybe some of you have heard, maybe some of you have not. Maybe we discuss a little bit on that. Okay, at the end. Okay. And up to now, what is our uh, uh, expected result? This is some of them. You know, we hope that you understand more or at least uh, uh, really remind you about what you have learned before about irrigation development and also about irrigation system and climate change that is maybe you have few or recognize about the impact you know to the crops or to the weather condition many other things that come uh, related to, to water and climate you know and hopefully you are able to uh, understand more about water management and we can just them and uh, our target it, how you're going to improve, you know, the better outcomes from cultivation, you know, or agriculture activity, you know. And we introduce, uh, we hope that you understand or uh, experience at least on the smart irrigation system, you know. But unfortunately for networking, maybe you know each other from online, but you didn't see each other on site. But, you know, in the future, if, you know, it's possible, maybe you can visit us here in Thailand and we can take you to see, you know, some of these uh, irrigation system. You can take you to see kind of the participation irrigation management. You can see so many other, you know, kind of integrate farm, those kind of thing that is already practiced in 
uh, many areas of Thailand, you know, in, in order to cope with the change, the climate or some other thing to reduce the risk, you know, and have a uh, good productivity and resilience to the uh, climate and some other condition. Really? Okay. So let's have a look at the uh, contents of this uh, uh, training itself. You know, we have eight topics uh, from the last two weeks. First one by Dr. Barut is the principle and development of uh, irrigation system, you know, and followed by the climate change. You know, that one we have a look at the climate change on irrigation by Dr. Gebra herself. And then we have two topics related to uh, greenhouse gas, you know, that is uh, causing the climate change. And also we have a look how we produce crops, you know, by used water and how we recognize that on the water footprint, that maybe the concept that have been used for uh, evaluation of products. And I think many countries right now use it as some kind of uh, basement or kind of uh, evaluation that, okay, how much water we use and do we use the water effectively, okay? And next, I give you some uh, insight about the uh, irrigation water management, you know, on the I, uh, I, uh, IWIM. And IWIM is the important part of this is the participatory irrigation management that is quite important for the successful when we discuss deeply in that. And also we introduce the water user group that is the base of uh, that, that the, the, the team go to work with and how it together, you know, on the participatory process. And the second week, we have a look at the plant physiology and how plant cope with water scarcity, you know, and then we go for the technology part that is a GIS, UAV, you know, to in order for us to calculate crop water requirements by using kind of remote sensing techniques, you know. And we have a look at the last one on the smart uh, farming that, you know, have been practiced worldwide right now at the IoT precision irrigation, modern irrigation, those types of things, okay? So let me summarize uh, each of them and maybe add up some of them, you know, here. First of all, we have uh, the topic on the principle and development of irrigation system. And on the, you know, we talk about the importance of the irrigation at the multi-purpose, you know, and of course we have to include the crop, increase the crop yield. So he discussed about the, Dr. Tavaro discussed about the climate that is important as a base for water use. And then the crop itself, you know, so if the water is uh, sufficient, you know, the crop will use water up to the optimum level, you know, or kind of, like we, we can say that potential water use, you know, but it depends on the type of crop. And also it depends on the age of crop, you know, and depend on the climatic condition, many things. And hopefully the, that one will come up with a good yield. But in reality, it's not like that, you know because uh, we could have a different kind of soil condition, environment, water spread, many other things. So the yield or the crop water yield itself, you know, it could be some kind of the actual evapotranspiration that could be different than the uh, potential one. But it doesn't mean that the yield have to be increased. Oh, sorry, they have to be decreased because that depends you know, on the stage of the crop. You know, if you have a water spread, uh, not so much at the period of the high of, not the uh, less case sensitive, you know, the yield will not be so much decreased. But of course, if you have water shorted at the period and it, the crop is so much sensitive, you know, the, 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 the result will be a little bit different. So, so that is depend on this. Okay, and then we have a look at the yield, you know, in response to the relay to water, you know, that's called uh, 
uh, what happened to you when we have water shortage? You know that is we can uh, be uh, discuss with you the actual you. You know, really to allocate for. But actually, this equation is not quite work this way. You know, this is a simple way of uh, let's say cop you model. But actually, it's not really like this. You know, it just now today. Even the FAO doesn't use this uh, equation anymore. You know, they use kind of aqua crop. You know, but we haven't got time to introduce you the um, aqua crop model because the aqua crop will be more of the precise. But it need a lot. It need a lot of input. You know, so so we just uh, discuss with you more simple way of this uh, equation of the crop yield model. And of course, we introduce with you ELISAT. You know, that is a uh, model to monitor. Crops and you know and the water use and uh, it's a kind of cow based irrigation service. So you can come out with the uh, crop growth and then come out at the end of how much you or how much uh, production we will go to get. Okay. And after that, we have a look at the irrigation methods. You know so. Mostly it divide into four. Here you have surface, you have sprinkler, you have subsurface, and of course you have micro. The system that mostly I will be more, more considered than the other one is the uh, micro irrigation. You know because it for it's good for water saving. You know you can see on the, on the bottom that you can have a, we can call actually sometimes you know this uh, irrigation technique we call it localized irrigation. What does localized mean? But localized mean it you only irrigate at the certain location where the crop and the roots is, and the other one you don't you don't have to do that. So you don't waste the water. You do just just in, that uh, enough water, you know. So it doesn't waste a lot of water. And uh, from a lot of practice that we have done so for long, you know, it can save water at least you need one third at the minimum. You know, or maybe 30 or more percent, and it can go even to 50 percent less than the, uh, the other methods. You know, of course, if you have a look at now today, it kind of technologies you know that use for a crop production, like you have a greenhouse system to protect it from environment, to protect it from insects, to protect it from some other you know thing that may be harmful or maybe uh, not really good for the crop and you have kind of uh, hydroponics that you can irrigate and also you, uh, apply fertilizer at the same time, you know, and you have uh, some kind of another goal thing like aeroponics, aquaponics, and eco, you can have fan, uh, fan factory and even nano farm, but it's a kind of application, you know, from, from, from one to, to the other and more, okay? Next. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Then we have, uh, so in summary, you know, here, we, in the irrigation principle, we have a look at how to irrigate, when to irrigate, how much water, you know, so, so at first you understand the soil water relation, you know, those uh, definition there. And next you have uh, understand about the crop, you know, you can create the crop water requirement and the crop water requirement with the efficiency, with the effective rainfall, with the other factor, you will come up with irrigation water requirement, you know. But of course, after irrigation water requirement, you come out with the yield, but that you would have to be respond to water somehow. You know, it depends to a kind of crop, it depends to the water shortage or not. If water shortage, you know, is it very significant? And what about the time period of water shortage is more effect on the answer or not? And lastly, you have a look at the irrigation method. Of course, it support uh, so, or supply the water to the crop. You know, you can have uh, many things, uh, many methods there. So that is on the uh, demand side part. And on the supply side, you know, uh, uh, to convey the water from the source up to the field, you know. So you have uh, you have water resources. It can be reservoir, it can be groundwater, it can be steam. 
you know, it can have, you know, some steam and we are uh, our diversion stage, uh, our diversion structure, pumping stage and whatever, you know. And after that, you will have the main delivery system or the, or the canal or, you know, you can have main canal, secondary canal, you know, this can be open channel or even pipe system, it depends, you know. And after that, you come to the fuel level. You have a fuel level like this kind earlier, you know, can have surface, sprinkle but of course my favor is uh, micro irrigation or here you can call localized irrigation you know because it can uh, actually save a lot of water and it can also contain the weeds you know because the water is actually applied to just the, the root zone or the location where the crop needs so you doesn't you don't waste the water and also you don't keep the water to the other place that the wheat or the other crop or the other you know thing that you don't like it go to take the water. And in summary for this topic, you know, it's kind of okay. In general, the capacity of the system, you know, it have to be a bit a bit bigger than the demand, you know, or at least equal to the demand. You know, so you can be sure or guarantee that you have enough water supply for the whole season, especially at the peak time. You know, but it, this means that you are going to irrigate at the, the potential, you know, so you, you have sufficient water, let's say that. But if you have insufficient, uh, this concept is going to be a little bit uh, different, you know. This one is called a kind of full irrigation system. But of course, you can have something called a supplementary irrigation. That means that you irrigate less, you know, you can have a, High of uh, reduction in, in, in water, uh, water supply or irrigation, but but it depends, you know, on, on that how much water you uh, you have uh, shorted or you have less than than the required amount. Okay. So my point is, you know, he conclude that you know it's a kind of connection between the water and energy next. But what I would recommend, you know, is kind of water, food, and energy mixer. Because of, it's not really all about water and energy. You know, it's about our food also. So it can be kind of water, food, and energy mixer. You can see from the left, you know, here you can have the water that, okay, in order to produce crop and food, you have to, you have to have irrigate agriculture. We have water consumption, you know, of the of the crop of food, and of course, along that way, you have a, a water, virtual water, or even you know, we can estimate that by the footprint. But related to water and energy, you know, of course, uh, the water can generate hydropower, you know, and the energy itself also can us back to use at the source for pumping state or uh, pumping and also for transport the water you know and it really between the the food and energy itself the food can be transferred to the biofuel you know and of course in the food production you need energy you know for the uh, food production so this is the kind the of nexus between the uh, water food and energy in the later diagram on on, on the right you know, you can see that this is the sustainable development goal of the uh, UN. You know, you can see the uh, water can be the center of this, you know, and you have the energy and the food there because on the uh, uh, water itself, you can have the irrigation there. You can have a uh, topic of water quality after uh, you know, water quality, you can have the public up, uh, okay, uh, energy, you know, and cost. It's similar to the other one, but it can show you clearly that water is the center, you know, of this uh, nexus, you know, between water, food, and energy, you know, because it do, it's the driving force, you know, for, for us to come out with the relation, okay, without the water, this, this relation cannot, cannot actually uh, circulate. Okay, that will be uh, the summary of the first one. And next one, we have a look at the climate change. 
and the imp and the impact on irrigation water management. Uh, you have a look at the process, you know, of the greenhouse gas and how the greenhouse gas will trap the uh, radiation. You know, let's say the the heat, the radiation that you reflect from the earth and it's coming back to the atmosphere and it's blocked by this uh, greenhouse gas that is mostly carbon dioxide, methane, nitrate oxide, you know, some other thing, you know, or EK kind of uh, uh, as a, I can say sulfur dioxide, may I say as a, you know, okay. And this is just uh, Dr. Kevra had, you know, showed you the development of the uh, climate model. You know, firstly, you have only uh, early at the early earth stage, you have only atmospheric, uh, you have only land and ocean, you know, that they take in the first generation. And then we come out with uh, some other company like aerosol that is in the air, you know, that we affect the climate, you know. That will be second generation, and after that we have the carbon cycle add up to be the carbon cycle and dynamic vegetation. You know, will be another another fourth generation, and the, the other one you have a uh, atmospheric chemistry. You know, and then we have a uh, land, uh, land and uh, land ice. You know, that become the fifth or called AR fifth. Right now we are on the AR six. You know, the ASIC, you, you can see that if you're on this uh, scale, uh, you can have a scenario, you know, that is depend. Of course, we need the SSP one. That is a sustainable, uh, sustainability, you know, on, on, on the on education is good. And also the uh, mitigation measure, you know, it's good, you know. And low, uh, low, let's say, uh, good adaptation, you know, or less adaptation. So it's uh, this kind of uh, uh, scenario. So what is depend uh, on each country, or, you know, but of course we want the best one for the uh, sustainability. And the other one, we talk about the uh, low scaling, you know, Oh, this is not that scaling, it's a kind of uh, grid system. Okay, it's a kind of grid system of, of the of the modeling itself on the on the GCM global climate model. You know, you can have the grid of each, and I think it's 200 kilometers each grid, you know, and it's on a TD. It, this, this, this picture just shows you the TD on, on the grid itself and on the layer from the earth surface up to the air. And it can you can see on the other side it from it from the Earth of it up to the ocean, so now it's also on the on the, on the ground and up to the air and on lower to the ocean. So each grid it uh, something going up and going down. You know that is the big of the GCM. And after that, you know uh, this uh, GCM itself. You know you can downscale because it's two two hundred kilometer is too big, you know, or, or in some case it can be 150 or some case it can be uh, 300 kilometers, but, but it's so big, you know, that it, 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 it can hardly uh, tell us what are the climate condition on the location that we really want to understand or want to study, you know, so we have uh, this uh, dark scale technique, you know, so you can have a dynamic dark scaling, you know, uh, and you can have the statistic downscaling, you know, so the, so the, 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 the statistic, uh, statistical downscaling is more of the kind of uh, <coughs> relation between the historic one and the local climate condition one, you know, and the dynamic is more of a kind of uh, use of regional climate model, you know, to, to write this uh, GCM, okay. But if you downscale that, you know, on the monthly basis, daily basis, and you can uh, come out with uh, hopefully, the, uh, right now you can have a twi uh, twin, uh, 12 kilometer resolution. That is quite good, you know, because it's 12, 12, 12 by 12. That is uh, only about 144 square kilometers. That's not so big, you know, compared to the original uh, grid size. 
So this one can let's say in Thailand we can say it maybe cover one of the uh, district, you know, or sub district. <coughs> it's not so bad, you know, because it, it's say 300 kilometer or 200 kilometer. That we own the whole province, or maybe some region for for some country. But I think 12 kilometer grid is good just to be uh, like a district level or sub district level. Okay. So. We also have a look at the effect of the global warming on agriculture. That is also issue of this uh, training, you know. So the effect of growing, of course, increase the weather, you know, kind of extreme weather. You can have more of the flood, you can have more of the drought, and probably you have more of the tropical storm or storm in, in some other region, you know. And also you have kind of... Uh, the melt of the glacier and those kind of thing, and you have uh, lots of biodiversity. You know, you have uh, effect on the uh, coastal. You know, you can have uh, unpredictable farming condition like a, a longer dry period or big storm. Those kind of thing. You know, and also we can have a more of the pest and something to affect the animal or even your crops, you know, and also change in the ocean itself. You know, there's so many other dynamic inside that the global warming uh, effects, you know. Of course, what we want is the, what we call it CSA, climate smart agriculture. You know, maybe you have heard about this a lot and on this uh, training, we have discussed a lot about the climate smart agriculture that is called uh, sustainable, you know, uh, the uh, increase of productivity and income and also strength the, and resilience to the climate uh, and climate viability, you know. And of course, reduce the, uh, you know, the effect on the crops uh, by the uh, chain of the climate itself. Of course, on the downside, you know, so many, uh, management, also many things have to be considered, you know, we can have a soil management, water management, crop production, livestock, forestry, officially, uh, and energy management. But in this training, I think we talk more on the first three topics, you know, on the crop production, on the, a little bit on the soil management, and also on the water management. But the other, maybe we haven't go very much in detail about that, okay? And this is just the uh, climate smart agriculture. You can have the you know productivity. You can have uh, have mitigation. You know, but after mitigation, you cannot really go very far. You can go up with some kind of adaptation. Okay, that quite important. You know, for for the adaptation. My. Uh, Point of view here, you know, uh, especially for agriculture here, you know, is on the uh, reduction of water use and the adaptation way why by growing crops using less water and also generate or produce less, uh, let's say, greenhouse gas. So in this case, I will. I will say that adaptive measure to save water and uh, reduce uh, greenhouse gas or methane emission that will be good, you know. So this is just uh, show you about the alternative wet and dry, you know, but maybe I have this cut with you a little bit, you know, already on, on, on last week, you know, on this one that uh, from experiment many places, you know, the uh, water use reduction can reduce by 30%. Actually, uh, from my field experiment, you know, can it be about 20, 30, or even 40 percent, you know, water, water reduction. But the good point is about the methane reduction, you know, or methane emission. For my experiment, you know, the reduction can be 40 up to even 70 or 80 percent. It depends on, you know, the wet and dry cycle, you know, how many times you apply that. You know, and this, this of course this is for rice. Okay, sorry, the mentioned that this is for rice production. But if for some other crop, like is a upland crop or field crop, maybe this is not a problem because mostly you don't have the like a pending water in the field. 
จูยินเฮฟและคายออฟยูโนอันเนอร์บิกดีคอมโพสิชันโซยูนเฮฟดัตมีเทนบัตดิสมีเทนบีคอมออฟดีอันเนอร์บิกดีคอมโพสิชันโอเคบัตอัพคอสบัตอินพอร์เทนฟอร์ยูโนเดอะเซาท์อีสเอเชียนรีเจนยูโนออโตบริคอลรีเจนแบร์ไรส์อีสเออยูเลสเซปเปอร์คอปแอนด์พีพอร์โกรไรส์เอเวอร์เวอร์So this will be important for us and maybe for some other of you, you know, on the uh, uh, water saving and uh, methane emission reduction. Okay. Uh, right. So next, we have a look at the uh, reduction of the greenhouse gas from agriculture. You know, here we, uh, Dr. Thanwadi, you know, discuss with you about the significance of agriculture sector. You know that it contribute to climate change itself. You know, you know on on we, we always think about the climate change affect the crops or affect agriculture. But on the other hand, agriculture itself it have the effect on the climate. You know because we also produce the greenhouse gas by the uh, agriculture activity. You know. And you can have a kind of response to climate by you know have the more resiliency you know in terms of uh, agriculture you know practice like we discussed about uh, how to go rice smart you know less uh, generate of the greenhouse and also we can have the uh, mitigation you know. And adaptation, you know. I think at first, you know, people talk about mitigation, and then we found out that mitigation is can be a short term. In long term, we have to go for adaptation because the climate that it already permanently change. It to be with us, so it depend on us how we to survive. You know, by uh, changing ourselves or adapt ourselves. So cultivation or crop production is the same. You know, we have to change. You know, so. In by this concept that could be accept that we have to change, so we uh, have the kind of carbon footprint, you know, to see that okay, how much uh, carbon is you know generated uh, by this, you know, and the next topic we talk about the water footprint, you know, so carbon footprint is kind of the you know the balance of the uh, the carbon into the air and the carbon onto the uh, let's say. Accumulation in the crop or in a certain that it mostly not, doesn't affect the air, but it come out, of course it's, it become the carbon dioxide or the other form is affect a lot of uh, air condition and it, it end up to the greenhouse gas. So in this lecture, Dr. Tamadi give you some some experience, you know, on study you know, on that. Okay, or oh, this is on the bottom just show you the the composition of the important gas, you know. For 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 this agriculture, we have mostly carbon dioxide, and we have to also got methane or some other get like uh, nitrous oxide. <coughs> okay, this is just uh oh the global greenhouse gas emission um, uh, in 2020. You know, you can have the mostly from the agriculture and industry is about the same. You know, about 28 percent, 29 percent there, and of course you can have from the resident. Or commercial, you know, that is similar to transportation. That is it is for major sector that uh, generate or produce the greenhouse gas. You know, that all release the gas, uh, gas into the air. Uh, and the in the bottom left you have the emission from agriculture. You know, in the last ten year, you know, that, okay, in two thousand five, is. Uh, And it's on a figure in 2014 that it, it, it increased by 8%. You know, that, 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 that is because of the, we have more uh, of agriculture activity, more people to feed, to have to grow more crops. Okay. And on the right hand on the bottom, that is the show you the, uh, the ratio of the generate, you know, of the greenhouse gas. You can say that a lot in. Asia, you know, Asia is uh, quite the biggest contribution, you know, because Asia have more population and also Asia have uh, more of the agriculture area, you know, 
especially in my region where we are in Southeast Asia, you know, we, we, we got a lot of props. So let's say for the whole world, 44%, you know, of these uh, activity on the Korean culture on the Korean culture is in Asia. And the other part of the world is totally con, uh, consist of, let's say, 56% so the to majority in Asia. Okay. And this is, we talk about, you know, the adaptation and mitigation and also some measure that combine both, you know, like let's say the, the one that combine both mitigation and, and, uh, and adaptation that is a green infrastructure, you know, that it's about smart growth, you know, and the other thing is the kind of adaptation, you hand, how can you change the land use? How can you, you know, have a, some other thing, you know, there. And of course, uh, we, we need kind of resiliency. You know, we have an adaptivity, you know, we have a robustness you know, that become more resilient to, to the climate. Okay, from here. And at the end, you know, he talk about the greenhouse gas emission that it going to be convert to the carbon footprint, you know, so also he talk about the people, you know, or the product that we use now today, you know, that it goes to the sort of the carbon, you know, the, or the greenhouse gas into the air. So we have the production itself, you know, that we continue a lot of raw material, some energy, you know, together. And we come up with waste, we come out of emission of the, in her gas into the air and also into the uh, and also pollution in the water, you know. You have emission of the greenhouse gas again and oh, oh sorry. Okay, and also the water, and after we consume or use it. We also still have the reposal or the waste after the consumption, you know, we have, of course, we, we, in order to uh, convert this disposal to be not so be harmful, you need some more energy again, you know, and we can generate some waste or something. So it's kind of, let's say the cycle of people consumption of the product, it generates a lot of waste. So it depends on, on, on the greenhouse gas, or it depends on us how we go to reduce. So reduce means it, how we go to reduce the input into the farm, how going to input the processing, how we could to reduce the packaging. So on, on the bottom, you know, we, we talk about banana here. You know, banana is mean easy you know, in Thai, you know. But now today, banana is not easy anymore. You know, it's, it generates more of the, uh, let's say, uh, let's say garbage, uh, more of the greenhouse gas, because you can see on the left, that is a really arable in Thailand, that is the 7-Eleven in Thailand, you know, banana now today, it comes in plastic bag individually, you know. So it take what, had a lot of water for the water footprint, it take out a lot of electricity for electricity, footprint and it takes fuel for fuel footprint you know and on, on the right hand side you can see on the you know production of banana you know from the land population up to growth irrigation and harvesting of course i would like to discuss a little bit more on this banana production you know so it's a good example you know you know on the modern consumption and lifestyle, you know, that we consume more of the ready to eat, you know, what that mean? It means we consume more of the resources and also more of the energy. So with that, you know, we generate more of the greenhouse gas and of course the proposal of the waste or some other thing. Of course we have production costs, got to be more increased than on economics. But on the greenhouse gas on the earth itself, we have logistic costs and we have packaging costs, you know. So we have a, a 
actually on the plowing or tillage itself, you have to, you have um, at least twice. First, you you know open the land, and then you have a land preparation to make into the follow or the ridge. You know, after that, we have a uh, irrigation. You know, we have a uh, weed control. You know, cause and we have uh, in this one, we have a. Uh, in order to get a good shape or good looking banana, you know, you have the plastic bag to cover it, you know. But in the past, you know, <coughs> you, maybe you don't need this plastic bag. From the farm, you will go for local transportation, you know, uh, you know, on the bottom, on, on the top, you know, on the green direction, you know, and you go to the market. That is Thai, you know, that is a uh, Thai bananas, you know, on the market, you know, that is let's say for the whole the whole the whole the whole banana that is i think more than 10 is called us only 20 baht that's less than one dollar you know but now today when we chain our consumer chain the our consumption chain we go to more processing okay after harvesting we go for cleaning you know we need the water there we need our energy there and of course we go to packaging you know, or transportation, at, at the end, it come out to the market. For example, that I talk about 7-Eleven there, you know, this is each of them, you know, look nice. Each of them have their own plastic bag, you know, that's a lot of energy, a lot of energy, a lot of logistic cost, a lot of packaging cost. So that's why uh, I say it's uh, it dependent on us, you know, because if we, our lifestyle have changed, it's more convenient. But of course, it consumes more resource, more energy, you know, and absorb it affect the greenhouse gas in, into the air, and it back to us that we're gonna have a worse uh, climate condition in the future if we still really going on this behavior. Okay. And next, we have a look at the assessment of the water footprint. You know, this one we talk about the water scarcity the straight, you know, on the water, and you talk about the risk, you know. So you talk about the, the governance, you know, on the water itself, you know, and the other thing is on the topic, you know, related to the this water pin, we have kind of water main, we have many issues, you know, on the water related it after, you know, and we have um, actual issue down on the drinking water on the uh, sanitation, on the waste, on ecosystem, you know, on the uh, water management, what are you, you know, the kind of whole, the whole process, you know, okay. So how can we uh, separate the water footprint? We can have three of them here, you know, that uh, water footprint can be the green water footprint, the blue water and the gray water, you know, here the green is mean the one that use, uh, from the nature, like the rainwater use, the brew that means the water that you are actually support or supply to the crop, like irrigation water and the gray, of course, is a waste come from the, the, the field and you have to dilute the pollution. As I say, the fertilizer, after you use fertilizer, you have residue. Okay, you have to use some kind of water to dilute that or, or to do that, okay. So the crop, you know, Overall, you know, if you grow crop in the rainy season, you can have a lot of green water free from the uh, rainfall, and you have uh, can have some water, you know, from the irrigation. You know, but of course, if you grow crop in the dry season, most of the green water will be minimum, and most of the water will come from the blue water. But all blue water, you need more of the transpiration, diversion. You have the energy. Okay, of course, if you use groundwater, you need some kind of pumping, you know, you know, and also, also irrigation, you know, look at things. So it's, it's quite, you know, it depends on, on how we produce a cup of cost. After we produce it, you know, you can have a kind of waste, you know, or you can have to uh, chemical residual look at things that we need also, you know, some, some water to balance it okay 
So this water footprint, why they have introduced this concept, you know, this concept of, you know, kind of environmental sustainability, this kind of uh, social sustainability, and the kind of economic sustainability, you know. So, so we try to achieve, you know, all of this together, you know, that we uh, people realize that, okay, when we consume things or we consume crude or products, you, you take, you know, water with it, okay? Or this is just the, uh, say what? Okay, the water bit of each product, you know, on, on, the, on the top, it talk about potato, you know, potato itself. Potato itself, you take, uh, let's say, 104 unit, you know, of green water, 78, uh, let's say cubic meter per ton, you know, uh, you have a 104 cubic meter per ton for uh, uh, green water, you have uh, 78 ton uh, uh, cubic meter per ton of the uh, blue and about 141 for the gray. That means a lot of waste coming out that you have to at least take care of that. Okay. On the the other one is a beef, you know, water footprint for beef is more of, of uh, complicated, you know, because you need a feed production. You have to need the cow, cow and uh, stalker. You have to need feed lot. You need processing. You need retail. You need consume. So it come out, okay, you have to grow crop first. And then you get you use crop to feed the animal. And on the model, you have a farm management. <coughs> and that's, after that, you have a processing, you have a retailing, and you have customers. So this is long, longer way, you know, compared to the uh, water footprint of the potato itself, you know. So, so I mean, if you consume the thing like meat, you generate or you need more water, uh, you know, per kilo or per ton of, of, of meat, many, many, many times compared, compared to, the, to, 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 the, to the crops, okay? So let's say only 5% of the beef is used on the feed itself, you know, but majority of the beef is for irrigation of the grass, for the grass to, or maybe you can use of, uh, some uh, cassava or some soybean or something to feed the, the, the cattle you know, or the cow, but it's a lot of water for that, okay, that it con uh, it's 95% of water for that, okay, only 5% only for the other process, okay. So again, on the conclusion here, you know, I would like to say that, okay, the uh, water, food, and energy next up, it's quite important here, you know, and you can say that the, the WMO, you know, have created, this is the, for the SDG, you know, SDG uh, goal number two, that on the zero hunger, it also related to food, and this one number six related to clean water, and number seven related to the energy itself. So it's quite important that uh, you know for the, for on the global objective or for or for the SDG or the sustainable development goal. And again, here we have the water food and energy, you know, next us. And of course, now we have climate change <coughs> as an external. You can have social change and the human behavior, you know, so we can have a connect between these three uh, and the other two as an a, 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 a external effect. You know, we can have the water for energy, you know, let's say, okay, water need, uh, water can generate hydropower, you know, can, have the cooling, uh, you know, of the power plant. And of course, you need the energy for pumping. You need the energy for water conveying, and you need water for, for the heating of the crop, you know, in terms of the grow crop in, 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 in the, say, of the cold climate, you know. What we have here is water and food. Of, of course, we have the uh, need, we need uh, agricultural water, we need to uh, uh, Precipitation for crops and also the type thing. And on the other hand, you know, I'm talking about here, 
on, on the on the right, you know, agricultural policy in friend water demand. You know, that is called causal water uh, 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 food itself in friend water, you know, because you know the water demand can be increased, you know, uh, uh, by the agriculture or food production policy. Okay. And the other one will be a food energy relation here. You know, we talk about biofuel, you know, from uh, sugarcane or from cassava to biofuel, you know, or even palm oil can, can, can generate to, to fuel. Now today, you know, at the, at the price of petroleum is increased, you know, we can see the, a lot of conversion of the agriculture products to the energy like I talked about palm oil uh, to be the biodiesel, to use the uh, sugarcane or cassava convert to alcohol and use to, you know, kind of gasoline, you know. <coughs> and of course, you have energy for food, you know, for food production, food processing, and even the waste management, you need energy for that, okay. Okay. When we have a look at the uh, uh, principle and of the uh, integrate water resource management, that we also to, sorry. Okay, that right now, you know, or in at this time, you know, we have kind of economic water scarcity. You know why? Because I think our water supply itself is actually hard to be to be develop the new resources because in all good location, or all you know, economic side, we already have developed them all. So the if you, we try to develop more water resources, it could be more costly per unit of water, you know. So and also all the population growth in many countries already come to the to the point is no more increase. Like in Thailand, we have a kind of uh, <laughs> no more increase of population or some other, I think like in US or some other country, you know. So, but but of course in some region of the world, we still have a, a population increase. But my point is, you know, the water scarcity, uh, it will become the case. And what happened uh, that we have economic water scarcity, it means that we have to balance in the water use. Last year, and try to generate new uh, water resources that be costly, you know. So we balance between water use for agriculture and we have balance for, for water use for uh, people or domestic water. And also we balance for the industry, you know, or for ecology or for some other activity. That's quite important, you know, not just, uh, and of course, Water saving for agriculture, you know, that that's quite important because of maybe you have a look at the, at the figure that uh, later that you can see that uh, in many countries or including Thailand, you know, the water use for agriculture is more than 70%. And on the worldwide, it's also more than 70%. That is a lot. If you can reduce that, could help a lot, you know, on water conservation and could help a lot on us, you know, not to put a lot of more energy you know, a lot more money, sorry, for, for, for this water resource development. And of course, here we have a world food price, you know, that is also the crisis now today, you know, actually it started to, to catching up, you know, since 2003, you know, the index there, you know, is only 50, you know, right now, to, uh, actually not right now, it, last year, it 119 is more than double, you know, in let's say, uh, 15 years, something like that, but right now, within one year, you're not now in 2022, because the energy crisis and also the food crisis, the index even more increased. Yeah, sorry, they haven't shown you the figure now, but it's much, much more increased, but uh, worldwide, you know, because of the, the, the energy crisis and the, and the food crisis. Okay. We talk about the integrated water resource management that is quite important. You know why? Because it's a good 
or better water management. Of course, this need the good of the participatory, and you know, for the sustainability. This participatory means is uh, we need good support for many issues, especially participatory process. You know, and of course, you know, in order to do this, you know, you have to understand about you know how much water do we need. For each sector, you know, like for the people, for the food, for the nature, and then for other activities like industry, and we have to understand about the, the the how to manage this, you know, by have a good environment, have instill, have a good management instrument, you know, and after that, after all, you know. You have to balance, you know. If we, if we talk about water management, you know, you have to balance between likelihood and resources, you know. But if you try to develop more, you put more, you put you more on the resource development. You going to have a kind of deterioration or in terms of ecology and environment. But of course, if we try to predict likelihood too much, maybe people do have, don't have enough. Uh, water. Okay, so so it's kind of balance between this. So, what important here? I would say that the integrated water resource management is a kind of to uh, support the ecosystem here. You know, you can have the climate, the sensitive integrated water resource management here. We talk about the uh, coordinating. You know, the develop. And the management of the water and the resources, you know, of course, we want to maximize the uh, economic and at the same time social welfare. So we have to balance this economic and social outcomes, and these have to do without compromising the sustainability of the ecosystem. It means that we are not going to deteriorate or harm to the ecosystem. Or let take we are not going to take the resource from our generation from from the next generation. You know we we could leave it for the next generation to to have a good ecosystem. You know of course it have to be done by many issue there. We have to have water at the at the at the center, and you have another thing like land use for forest. You know and of course it is a, a kind of physical the other thing is we have to people there you have social welfare there you have economy there but this all of all of this have to do with people or to or the participatory participatory process that's why i discussed earlier participatory process is quite important you know in order to put this thing together and in a harmony way and it come out to be sustained okay so here they talk about nature-based solution, eco-based solution, you know, or the other side, you can talk about gray solution, or you can have hybrid, you know, you can have something between, you know, it depends. But for our choice for the next generation, maybe you need to come kind of hybrid or make maybe of eco-based uh, more friendly or nature-based solution, okay, yeah. So this is just to summarize about the possibility process, you know, that important because involvement of people, people will learn, but after they learn, they don't forget, they know how to do that. It's, it's a lot, lot by you have the hand on something, you understand it, you know, you have to, to, to nobody has to tell you, you know, but of course, this uh, participation, is can come, come on the low with one, okay, People already be have already only been informed, you know, or you can have kind of more of uh, really decision making involvement, you know, and only thing itself is only uh, public uh, hearing, public information, or you can have kind of joy decision making, you know, that that's it depend on the social constraint or on the uh, kind of uh, environment where, where we are, you know, okay. So this is just talk about the uh, process, the, the process on, on the left, it's on the Thai uh, environment. 
that we are ready for this because our constitution is reinforced on it, on our legal, our strategy, it all support. That's why we, we go very far on this participatory. Of course, on this participatory, you know, we go for irrigation project. You know, we uh, propose something that have been implemented in Thailand right now, we call it uh, oriented irrigation management. So with oriented irrigation management, you know, is the kind of uh, another step of the participatory irrigation management, you know, because you have kind of a service agreement that will be on the standard of the service and also the role of and responsibility of all party involved, you know, like a royal irrigation department that is a, the, I mean, the agency have some kind of responsibility, of course, the water user or the farmer or some other group have also their own responsibility and some local administration also have their own responsibility. And of course, this one, we have to work through water user group, you know, and this water user group, it have to be kind of, uh, kind of uh, driving. It needs some kind of fee, some kind of, uh, you know, the delivery policy, you know, that it, uh, uh, according to the standard, you know, so, so the PIM itself is, is it on the uh, thing to support on the capacity building, you know, of uh, all parties involved, you know, and the, w w why the uh, participatory process is quite important because after all, if people feel they are the owner of the project, you know, thing will be going smoothly because if you some it, 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 it's something belong to you. You know, you will take it. You know, you got to make sure that you have protect your own right. You know, to 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 use the, the resort as it should be. You know, so that it, the, the whole thing. You know, we call it a service oriented irrigation management. That we have practiced in some irrigation project in turn. I didn't say that all the irrigation project we can go to this step, but it's some we we have done that. Okay, the other one is just only the uh, participatory irrigation management. No service agreement yet. Okay. This is just some improvement we have done with ID, Royal Irrigation Department. You know, uh, the, the key point is here on the middle that I discussed earlier on last week. Actually, actually, it's last Friday. You know, we talk about it. We try to uh, initiate or install the water user group and integrate water user group at the same time to be sure that people have their own, uh, let's say, participatory point and, you know, influence influ influ point, you know, to, this, to deal with water allocation, water delivery with the project. But of course, they have their own role, you know, on monitoring and, you know, maintenance and on delivery itself, you know. The other thing we hope that we can come up with uh, the, the FIP, uh, proceed that we call them, uh, we call it a joint management committee. This joint management committee may be upgrade, you know, the irrigation from only inside irrigation to be outside irrigation, maybe cover the whole, the whole river basin, you know, all the, the whole uh, river lines, you know, it cover the people that use water from the reservoir, downstream, you know, that it called, maybe call it for, uh, let's say, resort, on your know, residential, you know, featurely, some other activity, you know, everything, not, not only irrigation. So TMC, I mean, all, all party have been member involved in water allocation and, and some other activity, you know. But of course, this one has to be some kind of representative, you know, not, not everybody, you know. Okay, this is just it. And this is just a little bit about water user group, you know. You can have the uh, participatory process. You, you can have, okay, water user group and integrate water user group that I discussed earlier. We have, we should initiate them at the same time, but if possible, we need the joint management committee, you know, that it can be overall river basin, you know, it, it, it can be kind of a location, decision making, when going to uh, open the water, when the water could be shut down, all those type of things, you know. And this one has to be 
of course, can be used for small scale or even medium scale or even large scale irrigation project. Okay. And in order for this PIM to be successful, you know, we have to be okay. People have to think together on the process. We have to show up here. Uh, we have to proceed on doing them together. And of course, going to have a benefit together. Okay. This is just summary of the equity of water user group. They can have a kind of coordination, you know, between the uh, government agency, you know, and, and, the, and the member of the group. And they can have monitoring of irrigation structure, you know, they can have a kind of monitoring of the member of water use themselves, you know, and they can have a kind of uh, participate on the activity of, of the group, you know, in order to respond to good water management that have been delivered to them or good water allocation. So they have responsible to operating, maintaining, and something like on the, on the bottom here, you know, that is the participate of people. They have a meeting together, you know, to kind of design so many things. You have to read, con uh, uh, so, sorry, the maintenance of the, of the system. Actually, this is the pie system, you know, and they, and they can have take care of a reservoir itself. Okay. Some of these uh, water management group, you know, that we have a uh, regulation themselves, you know, they have regulation on water allocation, you know, they can have the water, water delivery, you know, okay. They can have the penalty on people who are not really following the, the instruction of the group. And they can have the kind of answer thing like payment of absent, you know. Okay. Yeah. Of course, apart from the, the cultivation or irrigation, you know, that maybe can be a wet season and dry season, we have another water use like domestic water supply, featurely, and some other like downstream water use, and, you know, and for to use for ecosystem, and many other things. Okay. So this is just a uh, kind of the conservation and environmental protection, you know. So we have a kind of forest protection and conservation of forest. It can be participated by the water user group, and you can have kind of upstream protection. You know, in order to preserve more water upstream to be released later uh, by into the stream or into the groundwater, you know, by construction of check dam. Of course, you can have the planting of vegetable grass along the uh, reservoir, you know, to protect the erosion, you know, not to uh, flow into the, the reservoir itself. Actually, in Thailand, you know, the, the, the practice of the check dam and the practice of vegetable grass, it just, uh, in most of the reservoir, you know, we have the check dam upstream and when we close to the dam itself, you know, we have a kind of vegetable grass protection. You know, even, even the farm pond, you know, now today we have the vegetable grass protection, you know. I think, I think just the, this year or the few years, you know, we have more of the activity to rally, you know, for people to, to, to construct more of the check dam on the upstream area because of the, uh, the reduction of the forest area, you know, so, so we, that, that's why we need to protect them more, you know, <coughs> in terms of erosion uh, or, and, and water itself. And we can have a weed cutting and curling at the dam site, you know, in a sort to, to keep it at a good condition. So my final point, you know, about this uh, uh, participatory itself is uh, the farmer and officer have to work together. You know, not, not only one party, you know, the farmer and officer have to work together in order to have a successful, you know, this is in terms of you know, of course, uh, as a medium or large scale, but for the small scale, mostly farmer or water user group have to work together. But of course, they had to have uh, some advice from the officer. Okay, this is just a summary of the, you know, medium scale. You know, you can have a kind of uh, water user group, 
that I mean participate. You know, I'm not going to this detail. We have already discussed it earlier last week, and this is just some of the large scale election system. You can have uh, activity by the what you group on the meeting. You know, for starting the group, you can have the uh, meeting every season to decide, and you can have the uh, you know. Working together, you know, uh, as a group, like planting together, solving the problem, and working together on many issues, you know. And of course, you need the participatory on the maintenance, you know, and maybe also the operation, you know. And also, we have uh, to be to secure, you know, the future of the agriculture activity, you know, by train the new generation. To be involved into these uh, water resources. Okay, on this final here, you know, I would say the key factor for the success of the project, you know, by using this uh, PIM and uh, water user group. First of all, we need to remove the trust between farmer and officer, especially farmer have to trust the officer. If they trust each other. Thing will be easy, you know. They know, you know what we will. You are sincere. We will try to help, or you try to work together, you know. And of course, participation have to be in the all process, thinking together, doing together, and then benefit, you know. And if possible, water fee is important. Water fee, uh, I will make it clear again that water fee is not for project. What if it for the people or for the group, you know, to work together, you know, it's be the, it to be the what if it be the cost, the the money to be used for by the group of the of the people, and of course maybe we need some regulation among the group on the water allocation, on some other issue, you know. And if these all of these have worked through water user group, you know, so. If this we need kind of uh, thinking, this all of this activity, you know, and leadership also important, you know. And final here we talk about the service agreement, you know, the service agreement that maybe something end up, you know, that uh, talk earlier that it to be sure that you know we are not talking about only efficiency, we are talking about equity, and then also we talking about reliability. You know, but this is can be uh, together between him, what to use group, and maybe if you go another next level, you know, you can have the service agreement here. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Okay, next, we have a look at the plant physiology, plant state, you know, and of course, and water scarcity. So we, why we need the water, the water it needs for, you know, the tons, uh, the, to protect the water from heat, stroke, and also to take the mineral, you know, from the road up to the plant. Itself, so water is good for taking water along with mineral and also to protect water from the heat uh, to protect the, the crop from the heat. Okay, so this is just show <coughs> you know the you know when we have water straight, what what are going to happen? You know, we can have the cell expansion, ball synthesis, you know, and at the end, we have if water straight is so much, we can have kind of. Uh, so, so root accumulation, you know, we have uh, F6 acid accumulation that will be very harmful for the crop, you know. So, I mean, if well water plant, it will be easy, 
no harmful accumulation of the solute or acid, you know, but if water straight, it, it, it's uh, go to like minus two mega Pascal, it'll be so harmful, you know, that will be the activity of crop will be reduced and the poly and the toxic will come, you know, so this is kind of, okay, it can is well and the plant under straight, okay, and the other state, it, if it more than minus three mega Pascal, you know, that is we, we pan cannot really tolerate anymore. You know, is it also difficult? So, so the environment straight, you know, is also something that, you know, we have to understand in the crop, okay. So water shortage, you know, clearly you can see from the last figure that have influence on the crop, you know. So talking about water shortage, in the other term, we call it drought. You know, when, when, when we have uh, insufficient amount of water, you know. By definition, we can divide it to four, you know. Uh, we can have causing called agricultural droughts. What does it mean? It means the, the water is not enough for crop production. We call that agricultural drought. The other thing we call meteorological drought. That means the rainfall itself is less than the, let's say, average. You know, because in general, it could be um, uh, some certain amount of rainfall. But if some particular year, the rainfall is less than some certain percent, let me just maybe say 10% or 20 or even more, you know, you can even call that meteorological drought, you know. And then we have hydrological drought. It means that water in the in the resort is in, in the reserve itself, it reduces a lot, like uh, in aquifer, in the lakes, in the reservoir, if water is a little reduced, you know, we can call that hydrogen drought. And lastly, uh, you know, we, we call this uh what sorry. Socioeconomic drought, that it means the drought that have heavily impact on economic and social you know so i mean the people life it may be not not uh, let's say as normal anymore you know you have kind of difficulty okay so 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 so, so it depends you know so if you have a agricultural route maybe 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 you cut you use too much water maybe you can do real activity if you have medical drought, maybe meteorological drought, maybe it's and horological drought is, is some kind of the start, you know, and you have an effect on agriculture. And at the end, if it's so severe, you could have its socioeconomic effect, you know. So what is the effect of the drought on the plants? You know, it, it can affect the water status, it can affect the nutrient status, it can affect the bio, biochemistry process can affect assimilate of the party uh, partitioning, you know, it can affect the oxidative damage, and of course it can affect the crop load and finally it's you itself, okay? So in order to ask to manage water properly, probably we need some kind of here, maybe smart water technology, and of course this smart water technology can go for smart water saving, you know, this is just for example in the rice you. You can have, you can install, you know, water level meter. You can install the water station. You know, you can have a kind of, you know, monitoring system, and you know what where is a plant state. You know, and you know when 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 we should be irrigated. You know, so actually on the right hand side here, you know, here it show us, you know, kind of irrigation that we can have a technology, you know, on water saving. Like I have discussed earlier on the wet and dry technique, you know, you can have a continuous flooding. That is always, uh, uh, mostly it uh, is a traditional way of people cultivating. And we can have the alternate wet and dry. You know, it means that, okay, you can have uh, irrigation at one time and you let the field dry and the uh, water level is a little bit down below the surface and to let the air go in and break the cycle of methane emission or, meat or, 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 or the decomposition, you know, uh, to reduce the methane. So the, the methane cycle, it, it uh, actually disrupts 
if the methane that the cycle is disrupt, it have to restart again after the next wet uh, stage. <coughs> so so that why it reduces methane by uh, I this got earlier about forty up to eighty percent. You know this is called alternate wet and dry, but Okay, that is a general impact in Thailand or many, many other countries that they go rice now today. But of course, you can go even in another step, you know, we can call it modern irrigation. Okay, you have kind of a monitoring system that is called a smart technology. But depend, you know, maybe you don't need that. You know, if we can have the, uh, maybe small farmer, not so you know, much, but if you have big farm or commercial, Still farm, you know, this must be the modern irrigation maybe is important. Okay. So this is more detail about the wet and dry technique. You know, it can reduce the methane by 80% that max that I have that my from my experiment. You know, the minimum uh, for any uh, for maybe only small contribution will be 20%. Of course. Water use saving can be by one third or even more, and this it can have the water use efficiency increased by twice, and it reduces the risk of the drought and water shortage. That important, you know, and we can have kind of really easy, you know, instrument like this. You have a kind of PVC pipe, and you make a hole on the side, and you make put this. On under the ground surface, maybe why one feet, you know, something like that, by 15 or 20 cents, you know, and you can measure what, what is the level of the water under the ground right now. You know, because actually, uh, uh, for right cultivation, you don't need to actually pond the water at all times. You know, you can reduce the water level to be sure that, okay, it's not too, too, too deep, you know, uh, below the ground surface, but crops still take the water, you know, let's say maybe 10, 10 centimeter, five centimeter, 10 below the ground is still okay. But more than 15 centimeter, maybe too much for the rice, you know, okay. So, so this, and it, but if we do this, it can reduce the water from, you know, evaporation process. And so it can reduce water from uh, percolation process. So it reduce water a lot, you know, by these two process. So next we have a look at the GS and UAV, you know, that is called say, okay, on the GS itself, you, know, you have the real world and you have the geodata as a representative, you know, of the, of, 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 of the, of the earth, you know. So you can have many layers, you can have the base map layer, you can have uh, land use layer, you can have the, uh, you know, some other layer all together, you know, become a geo maps, you know. And of course, on this, you have attribute, you know, it's in the kind of, of the table that add to each position that you can have a look at it, you know. So this uh, attribute data we, and, this, and the geo spatial that combine together, you become a called GIS map. You know that we can use for anything, and on the on the bottom, you know, you can see it on the the use of GIS. You know, you can use for land management, you can use for resource allocation, you can use for engineering, you can use for uh, topography analysis, anything. You know, and the application now is it huge for GIS. And this is just show you the now today. You know the. Uh, with the development of the navigation system, you know, or GPS, you know, that originally developed by the US, but right now we call, we can have a car, a global navigation satellite system, GNS, you know, that is combined by many other systems too, you know, you can have a GPS at the start, you can have Galileo of the European one, you can have Krasnos of the Soviet, and you can have by two of Chinese you know, development, you know, that it already support on GIS. You can get the access to this uh, global navigation satellite system. Okay. And apart from you know the uh, GIS, 
the 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 global navigation satellite you can have the uh, remote sensing you know that you can have the uh, one on the global level that is a bigger picture you know you can have a smaller frame of the remote sensing that cover regional level or that is uh, maybe the, the other one is a high high level orbit of the satellite you know like let's say modis you know and you can have a, more of a regional level that is more of a resource management level that's called Landsat. You know, right now we work on Landsat 8 or some other satellite. Of course, but if you go on the field, down to the field, you know, you need some kind of aerial photograph. You can have the drone or UAV to work with that, you know. Okay. Okay, this is just uh, show you the... <coughs> water, soil, you know, and vegetation, uh, spectral signature, you know, okay. Well, by using the satellite, the water will be some kind of, you know, visible uh, wavelength, you know, and the green is another wavelength, and the soil is another wavelength. So by this, you know, we can identify from the satellite image that which part is the water, but we see the bare soil, we see the, the cultivated soil, you know, or the forest or whatever, you know, by identify the different, I think actually we identify by using different wavelengths combined together to come out with the uh, interpretation of what, what is the uh, surface cover, okay? Of course, you can have this uh, satellite, you know, for drought monitoring, you know, you can have the, let's say the standardized mutation index, you know, you can have a uh, type of NDVI, net deviation vegetation index, you know, you know, that is uh, all um, mostly the index that generally used by, by most people, you know, to, 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 to tell us about the health or the condition of, of the crops. You know, if you have drought, you have water shortage, the thing will be different, okay? It's about NDVI. And we can have so many free and open source software, you know, that will help us, you know, on this uh, GIS and limo sensing, you know, like you can have access to free data from the satellite. You can have free software from the GIS and you can have, you can make a base map and sometimes it can be it distributed free and you can develop your own, you know, after that. And after you put the demo sensing together with JS, you can use this as the tool to assist you, you know, on the kind of monitoring on the crop water requirements. On, you know, because the, on the conventional, conventional method, you know, you have to understand the, you know, the water demand, you have to work with the officer and you have to do a calculation and then you have to you understand, okay, how much water you should apply. But, but of course, when you, you do sensing, you know, you can have the satellite to monitor, okay, how much water is already planted and what kind of plant it does, you know, and you analyze, okay, how much water do we need to irrigate, you know, and what is the crop, you know, let, let's say at, at the end here, you can have even crop area, crop pattern, crop density, and now today you can even estimate the crop evapotranspiration, you know, by using the image set, uh, satellite image. You can do like, a lot, you know, you know, on, on the large scale planning, of course, on the field level, it could be different, different. Maybe you still need a uh, kind of uh, measurement in the field. Okay. So the last topic you discussed yesterday or the day before, you know, it's on the smart farming. You know, and also you use the IoT for the modern irrigation system. You know, maybe uh, somebody can call it the evolution of precision agriculture. You know, so and that's pe that person, you know, in the past people use a uh, kind of animal or the type thing, and then you start to use more of the uh, machinery. And now today you use more of the drone, you use more of satellite, but in the future, you know, could it be more of the data mining, you know, we have everything connect, 
you know, and uh, can you can control most of things. That, 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 that is a projection. What is the future? But of course, this is not for everybody, not for every country. Could it be depend on what kind of development in terms of technology on the hardware side, on the software side, and also it's on the uh, IoT in, in your own area, you know. So, so it's, it can be different, okay? So next they talk about, you know, okay, try to have a next set between water and energy, you know. Right now they have the prime, let's say initial project, you know, in, in India, you know, to put, to okay, reduce the water use, uh, water evaporation <coughs> in the canal by putting the uh, solar cell on the top. So you can generate the electricity by the solar cell. And at the same time, you can reduce evaporation from the canal. This also about the same, uh, I think, proposal to be introduced in the canal in California, because California, they divert a lot of water from the Hoover Dam across from the east to, to uh, irrigate in the west of California, you know, that they're going to try to cover this canal system with the solar cell, so they can generate electricity and also reduce the evaporation at the same time. So, the last one here is on the IoT for agriculture, you know. It can have, it can use for, you know, fuel monitoring, it can use for water management, it can use for soil monitoring, you know, it can use for, uh, for machine operation, you know, so it's got the, the application is, I think, really the whole process of agriculture. Of course, at Casesa University, ourselves, we develop this called Crop Iris X system. You know, we have a data center and we have the IoT system, you know, we, and we have the dashboard and you have the farm and you a farmer also have the application of this. I think at least we developed this for, 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 for our, under our research grant, you know, to, to help the farmer to, in order to operate their field smartly. And of course, we also do a kind of, you know, environmental monitoring and control for some fruit crop like here, durian in the Eastern part of the country. You know, we monitor it to be sure that how much actually water use, you know, and actually farmer can reduce water use by using our system and understanding actually how much durian need or the water it need for, 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 the, for, for the crop right now. Because in the past, you know, without the prior knowledge of how much water it need, more, mostly farmer will irrigate or, or put too much water for, for, for to be sure that it could get good yield. Because durian now today is, is among the highest price crop, you know, or in terms of fruit. You know, because in Thailand, now there are many people in the eastern part, or in some of the part of the country, convert there and to do, do it. You know, maybe some of you maybe know about it or have consumed it. Maybe some of you don't know, but of course, you can have a look at it. it, it that is quite important uh, fruit for Thailand now today for internal consumption or even for export. Okay. Here, I want to summarize here, you know, about the, the, the revolution, you know, because we talk about the Indian Sea evolution, okay, this is about it. But for agricultural revolution itself, we can start, we say now we are on the fourth agricultural revolution. You know, at first, we adopt the modern agriculture techniques, you know, like we can get uh, better crop, a uh, bit better, better seed, you know, those kind of things you know, uh, and, and uh, cultivation techniques, you know, the type of thing, you know, and next generation, we have a mechani mechanization, you have a farm mechanization, you know, that is also make it called commercial field. You know, this kind of, you can see that in US, uh, in Europe, you know, that is a uh, second generation, 
is mechanization farm. And then we have a green revolution. We have better seed, better understanding about genome, about the, you know, the, the, the we develop crop that it give us more use, use less water, more tolerance to environment, that kind of thing. We can call that uh, the third challenge. And now we are on the fourth revolution. Why? Because right now we can have the not only the, the good farming, uh, good seed, good machinery, you can have the control. You know, you can have the control via uh, have satellite data to collect the data. You know, you can have the greenhouse system. You can have the mobile system to monitor or control and cost so many things on the IoT and, you know, and the uh, precision agriculture that coming in, you know, they've been called this uh, digital revolution of the uh, agriculture. Okay. Oh, this will come out to the, our final discussion. My point is, you know, first, right now, we are on climate change and water resource management. That's quite important, you know, because climate change and water resource management quite important. Why? Because of climate change, you know, on, we have a effect on water spread. You know, it can have a temperature increase. It can have the uh, decrease in annual precipitation. You know, and it can also have a heavy storm or heavy precipitation, and it can have the impact impacts next the impact on water related process like high high water event, you know, uh, vegetation water spread, increase the flood, you know, uh, infiltration opportunity is lower. Why? Because the rainfall coming fast and intense, uh, intense. You know, intense, you know, that why it can really have less opportunity <laughs> to infiltrate into the soil. So, soil moisture it will be lower, you know, and of course, if the water will, uh, did not uh, flow through the soil into the ground, we have level diminish of the groundwater recharge, you know, and of course, if the, it's a bare soil or we, if, if the uh, rainfall it increase. We have a kind of erosion, you know, and of course, uh, resource saving is kind of impact. And another related impact on water, it will be biodiversity, the variability of water, and of course, we need to adapt our chain or our coupling pattern, you know, and of course, we have problem of what uh, food security. I mean, and then also water quality. And in this, we discuss a lot on mitigation or adaptation, you know, so, so that's why we, every of us come here together. You know, we, we know to talk about the input of land and water management. Okay, and then another one is about soil and water conservation, water saving technology, you know, and also another thing is about water productivity. This is quite important, you know, because in the past, you know, you, you just cultivate crops, but now today, you have to think about, okay, for one cubic meter of water, how much income or crop you can get, you know, but if you go rice, you know, you can take a lot of water, consume a lot of water, but you really get not so much money from it. But if you grow some other like thing like vegetable, you take less water, but you can get more income. So it means more money per cubic meter of water because water is limit, limited, you know, by, by this uh, crisis, um, you know, on the, on the chain. So how, how can we be smart and use more and make good water more productive, okay? And of course, water saving is another issue to, to go along with the water productivity itself, you know? So in this, you can have the high performance system like the distribution system itself, you can convert from quantum to be more on the pie system, you know. And of course, we need kind of equity system, you know, and we need to adapt ourselves to the cropping pattern. You know, and on, on, on this, you know, people have understand or have good training, have good participatory process, 
and have good governance. You know, we be all on the climate change and water resort. They are all related together. That's important, you know, for, 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 for the whole thing. I think we, we spend these two weeks to understand about this. Okay. And this thing I want to discuss about water food next time. You see on the left, it's a small, small scale, you know, okay. On, on the basic one, you know, you can have the energy security, food security, and blue water supply security, you know. So water is a center. It is a center here, you know, we have you can have the center water resort, you have green blue water, you know. You can have water for environment, you know, you can have the uh, water pollution, you know, that you need the energy to clean up. You can have, uh, <coughs> you know, like kind of uh, water recycling, you know, system there. You can have the waste recycling there, you know, but that is, that is a kind of small picture. But on the right hand, that is a last picture of the relation, you know, between water, food, and energy. You can see it is quite, quite complicated here, you know. You know. Maybe we don't have time to 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 elaborate them all, you know. But we can have we can see here some of the component, you know, like okay, on top of uh, between energy and water, you know, you can have the renewable energy, you know, by uh, hydropower, you know, or you can have the biofuel. Or you can have the wind, you know, but but of course it related to uh, agriculture and water will be biofuel and biomass, you know, and hydropower. Okay. And the other thing is you can have uh, agricultural uh, production, of course, you need, you know, this uh, on this figure, it concludes that we consume about 6.6% of global energy you know, for crop production, you know, like let's say we use for machine, also for water application, you know, and also for livestock, usually whatever, you know, okay. And you can have food security, you know, here on the top, you know, that mean, no, okay, water is, can be used for crops, can you for livestock, you know, uh, it's a crop to feed livestock and water for crop itself, you know, uh, for, with, for our culture, that, that thing. And you can have the uh, uh, blue water supply security on the left, you know, that means water, you have, you have to have the uh, access to uh, safe drinking water, you know, water, water for industry, water for transportation. Water for recreation, tourism, and some other thing, you know. So I think this is quite a, a, the whole picture of okay, water is quite important, you know. The, the, you know, is the center, you know, of 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 the whole thing. If we without water, we cannot drive the whole thing, you know. So water, food, and energy. This is kind of big picture, you know, that connect them together. Maybe you can have a look at that later. Okay. The third point I want to conclude here that it's important for the integrated water resource man management to be recognized and implement, you know. In the past, you know, mostly we are putting our effort on the supply side management. What does this mean? It means that we try to develop more of reservoir, more of water resort, more pond, more weir, you know, in order to get the fresh water. And of course, it, it, after we use a lot of water, uh, it's surface or ground water, whatsoever, we got to produce some of the wastewater, you know, instead. You know, so it means if we use a lot of water, you know, we need to put a lot of effort, energy into, into, into that, and we could generate a lot of waste. So what happened if we, Change our emphasis <coughs> from the supply side management to demand side management. What does this mean? It means we put more on try to use water smart and try to use less amount of water. So it means that, okay, on agriculture ourselves, we try to reduce the water use, you know, try to save more water. 
t h a y u t more smart system, you know, like like I recommend earlier since the first s i m i l a r to the first lecture that I am the fan of the uh, localized irrigation rather than the traditional way of uh, surface or some other. Because in the past, maybe localized can be a little bit expensive, but now today the technology and the material is easily available. It's much cheaper, you know, for us to get kind of drip. Uh, I mean, the the the, the, the pie itself, or the you know the nozzle or those type of uh, other uh, equipment, you know, or actually it's much cheaper. You know, of course, we need to consume less water. You know, because maybe you let let's say that you know for for Thailand, I would say you know, in the past most people use kind of let's say maybe 100 l i t per person or maybe 150 or something like that. You know, per l i t per day. But now t o d a y in the city for for the city life, you know, people consume more than 200 l i t Per capita, per day, you know? and even if we include the commercial and the uh, some as a uh, each activity inside, you know, it can go up to 300 y you o know, lit per capita per day. That's a lot, you know. Like right now, we try to decrease that to to have a let's say more of smart device for uh, sanitary. You know, we have a go to try to go to lane for harvesting. You know, inside the city and then it's kind of a green area. You know, and of course we have to. Right now, I'm working a lot on the demand side water management for industry sector. You know, for industry, sector, even though they use less water compared to agriculture, but agriculture use maybe 70% percent of the whole water. Domestic maybe five or six percent industry maybe another five or six percent, and yes, uh, maybe 10 t e n t percent for ecosystem, but industry actually can reduce or can recycle or can reuse their own water more effective than the other sector. Why? Because they have let's say the uh, capability because they have a bigger income, you know, bigger financial ability. You know, celebrated so by uh, in Thailand. You know, especially in the industrial area. Right now, we are working on industrial water saving, industrial water reuse, and water recycle. And that why I think in Thailand or in other country, we have to put more and more attention on demand side water management. You know, less than the past, we talk a lot on the supply side. Okay. So in this, so we try to balance the livelihood and the resource, and of course, if we convert. Or connect due to the water footprint. You can see here clearly that <coughs> for the global level, you know, the internal water footprint, you know, on on the left, you can see that 70 percent, 7 8 of the total of the world is the internal water footprint, and 72 of them it consume for agricultural product, and only 3 percent of them it for industrial. And only four percent of them is for domestic supply, and another twenty-two percent for the external water footprint. You know, you can see that this twenty-two twenty percent is for agriculture. You know, and maybe twenty twenty-two percent for agriculture uh, for industry. So, if we have a look at water footprint itself, what does this mean? It means agricultural product use ninety percent of the water on the water footprint. Itself because this one we take ecology, take everything. Only this, uh, uh, let's say, a production sector, you know, agriculture is 72 plus 20. That it means 92 percent, you know, and industry is about 5 percent, and domestic about 4 percent. That why we need to preserve and use less water in agriculture. If we take, if we look in this water, you can see clearly. Why this is so much important? That why I take back here to you that demand side water management, especially for agriculture, it can be more and more important. Okay, well, because if we have a look at this picture, you can see clearly. But that why it, it's 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 quite important, it's serious for us to do that. The other issue 
I want to talk about soil, water, and farm management. You know, so we can have a smart and suitable technology. You know, I'm not really going for only smart. It has to be suitable. Why? Because maybe some location we don't have that kind of technology, but we we can be we can still be smart. You know, yeah. and we can still have a suitable system for us. You know. So this is from the c i k i a c i k i a is a, a UN organization that giving funding for many organizations related to land and water. You like, uh, I think IRI, uh, IMI, those kind of organization related to water and land and crop and soil. Okay, here they talk about okay managing water and land. So it means fertilizer, you know, for the sustainable agriculture. Uh, intensification, you know, and on the on the bottom there, you know, they they are talking about the nutrient, you know, we have to to apply nutrient, you know, from for the right result, you know, right time, right amount, you know, so that's quite important there, you know, and also we have to talk about optimizing water management. It means that we have to talk more about water productivity. Reduce nutrient loss uh, related to water. You know, we have to talk to talk to talk about uh, our soil. You know, by maintaining healthy soil. You know, so it can supply water, and it can keep the nutrient for the crops. You know, and of, of course we need to improve the crops. <coughs> you know, to uh, have a higher capability of you know, using of water and also nutrient efficiency. So you see the whole thing; it's convert to water and nutrient and for, for fertilizer. You know, even on on the you know on all isolation. You know, so so let's depend on soil, water, and farm management is quite important. It has to be suitable, yeah. And it can be smart too if it possible. But it's suitable is the most important. You know. So what I mean suitable. You know, it means the technology have to fit the country and local context. You know, you know because it, you can have the of course everybody would like to have the climate smart agriculture. You know, you can have the uh, something to help farmer. You know, to have uh, their bit to build their resilient to ad adapt to the climate change, sustainability to you know the agricultural production and income, and you have to reduce the greenhouse gas. But of course, but to achieve this, you know, importantly. Farmer have to use local knowledge, you know, to ensure the the adopt adoption to 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 the to the uh, agricultural smart, you know, and have and the technology they have to be okay suitable, you know, for for us, you know. But of course, if you have access to you know something like IoT, like I showed you on the bottom, you can have kind of you know. Smart sensing, you can have a smart analysis, you can have a smart control. But if not, you know, you still can hold, can have a kind of, uh, let's say, uh, suitable, you know, uh, uh, system, you know. But because smart farming itself, it needs a lot of technology inside on the top or uh, IT inside, you know, like a uh, sensing technology, software application, communication, you know, positioning. Hardware and software, and also data analysis. So that's quite a lot, you know. It's on on IoT and system. But of course, if not, you can still have a kind of suitable system by use local knowledge. You know, for example, maybe maybe I have a teacher later. Let you know, tell you the suitable knowledge. Okay. Final point, I would like to talk about vulnerability and risk reduction in agriculture. So this is kind of uh, summary here. You know, we we would like to have agricultural vulnerability that to the climate change. You know, so we because we have the threat on the population growth, climate change, regulation, external on the market. You know, as well. You know, and on the other hand, you have a plan, a regional planning. You can have a mitigation on the on the greenhouse gas. You know, but my point is on the local production issue. You know, we can. You can do this by yourself, like crop. You can have kind of crop uh, mix. You know, select uh, like 
not larger than the sink. Uh, Monocrop, you can go to intercrop, you can go to some other thing, you know, like uh, natural resources, and you can have adaptation for uh, agricultural sustainability. You know, like uh, you can use uh, some kind of technology, you can have the uh, uh, land use for ecosystem, you know, you can have the uh, incision for risk management, you know, that's kind of uh, going to help us to be more risk resistant, you know, to, for, for, for the future, okay? Some issue to be raised up, you know, to reduce the, uh, our vulnerability, you know, to, to, to do, do, do this, you know, we have to, of course, to have a look on the water productivity and water saving, you know, of course, on the water productivity itself, okay, we have, have here many sectors that use water, like I discussed earlier, uh, on from the water footprint, more than ninety percent of the water used for agriculture. So you understand that you have to select the crop that consume less water and give us more productivity per cubic meter of water. You know, of course, on the irrigation or water application technique itself, we can go to this uh, smart. Techniques like wet and dry, or even on the upland crop, you know, you can have kind of let's say called deficit irrigation. You know, let, let me show you the next picture. You know, deficit irrigation is the water management strategy that can be applied for limited uh, seasonal water. You know, and also maximize the productivity of applied water. I mean, you can you can find out about this more. You know, on the, on the deficit irrigation. Okay. Because if we have the water deficit, it doesn't mean that we have to reduce the crop yield a lot. Of course, the crop yield will be reduced, but we can minimize the reduction of the crop yield by just keep the crop uh, some certain amount of water. You doesn't have to be because you, you have kind of short water shortage. You, know, you can go for this deficit irrigation that has been, have been going on for the last 10 years. You know, on this kind of research in, in many in many parts of, of the country of the world, you know, like in South Asia, in China, in many countries, you know, they, they, they are going along this, this route, you know, for the deficit irrigation. Okay. And the second issue here on the uh, the full reduction of vulnerability, you know, vulnerability is about crop production and crop mix system. You know, I would say that the crop mix we help us a lot, you know. Like we can have uh, intercropping rather than monocropping. We could have and you can have kind of the answer picture here. We call it a cool crop and then the, the warm crop together. The cutting, you know, we can look in more detail. You know, like this can help us to have more sustainable development. You can have a, a, a Counterpart of the mitigation global effect, you know, you can have the kind of environmental friendly production, and you can have uh, the kind of food security, you know, by this. I see this is new. This is not new. You see, it, it, it's something that like already I mean, uh, it, uh, introduced long, long time ago. But maybe it's, we have been we not much serious about using this, you know. Okay. And you can. Next point I want to make about agriculture and climate friendly technology, you know. So because of uh, climate smart agriculture, you know, you can you need to have a look on the okay water management, one thing, you know, you can have a look at the soil management, the other thing we already discussed. You have to talk about crop diversification. I just discussed earlier. <coughs> we have to talk about chemical input that is about soil and nutrient, you know, we, that also we discussed here, you know, that's quite important, soil nutrient, you know. And also lastly, we have to talk about the planting tree and a core forest tree that come back to the, the, my answer point. Where is it? Oh, it's on the participatory process. No, no, it's on not here. It's on the uh, on on my conclusion on the uh, water management. You know that is quite important 
that's okay for us to have to plant tree, to plant a grow forest in order to to have a sustained climate. You know, but because if we have so much uh, reduction in terms of forest, the climate can cannot be really sustained. You know, it can be a lot of dramatic change. It can be affect at a loss. You know, and lastly. I want to discuss about the access to waste and crop marketing forecast and re uh, uh, reduce this. <coughs> it's also my recent work, you know, on the waste forecast and crop marketing forecast. I think it's quite important, you know, because now today you can have access. Well, of course, you have some device, you know, some some mobile something, but it, to access the the weathering condition. Because right now we are working on the you know operation of the reservoir by using this forecast system. We have this kind of uh, uh, warning or message to the farmer to know the condition of the weather. You know, in the next so one week, next month, those kind of thing. You know, we to prepare. You know, so so we can have more of a water productivity, and people can be ready prepare. For the future, it could be dry period or wet period or whatever, and of course, <coughs> for the marketing itself, it's important for people to understand the crisis or the trend of of, of the future that are going to happen about the, the crop price, the food, price, whatever. Okay, that will be my final, you know, discussion. Yeah, we come up to the. Uh, open discussion for everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bansha, for your time that you are trying to look into all the topics that were talked during these two weeks. And you try to you attempt to summarize them for us. This slide is a great benefit for all that we can use it in the future for the work or for the research topic. So again, we will put this slide on the website and on the Google Classroom. Before we will go to the closing remarks session, I would like to open the room for the question or for the issue that any participants uh, maybe want to discuss or have a question for Dr. Bansha, please feel free uh, to join us asking the question or discuss about the issue. No one. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, uh, that is no one here that uh, want to discuss or want to ask the question. Uh, uh, hello, Ahmed. How are you? So you have a question or anything to want to discuss? Go ahead. Yes. I know what about you. Can uh, carbon footprint and the benefit of the end product, uh, if we example uh, the carbon uh, emission. Uh, uh, please, please uh, start. Uh, I mean, the... as a consumer, if uh, I'm going to buy uh, in America. Hello. Um, yes, Ahmed, uh, can you please start from the beginning again? Because of the six now is quite weak. So there is uh, some some part is the just uh, is not connect. So please, sure, uh, sure. yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm just wondering in uh, in carbon footprint and water footprint, uh, what is the benefit, the economical benefits of uh, the end product? Uh, if we're mentioning the value of, uh, for example, the carbon the emissions. Uh, I mean, as a consumer, if I'm going to buy, uh, let's say, for example, uh, banana, and uh, I found uh, two product of banana, uh, it is similar, only the different one product is mentioning uh, the value of uh, carbon emission. Uh, so it, it will not affect uh, the product selling. I mean, uh, physically, if if I if I know nothing uh, regarding the emission, uh, I will accept it. But if it is mentioning in the product, I will start thinking. You know, 
يعني in some uh, situation no English is uh, is better you know yes so it means that now you are you are paying more attention about this right just like when you yeah. want to buy something ah uh, Dr Vansha ah yeah. uh, can you if you want to discuss anything about this ah uh, Dr Vansha go ahead if you want to discuss anything about this Actually, you know, on the uh, uh, issue of the word to footprint, you know, that is quite uh, serious for people to understand it more because like you have a look on the production itself, you know, for agriculture sector, you know, it mostly 90% of the water is from this sector, you know, compared to the other two sectors like uh, domestic and industry. And it further, uh, let's say more smart, you know, maybe we select the product that actually Uh, useless water. It means it preserve, you know, the, the nature. You know, so I mean, that's a good point. You know that they do understand, and maybe to let's say you select wisely in the future. You know, it will be good for us. You know, for for the long run. Okay, that that will be really short, very brief. Okay, thank you very much. And um, so, anything else that uh, you want to discuss, or you want to uh, give us a recommendation or share with us? Um, okay. If if you have if you have anything and if you want to ask uh, more question or give us a recommendation, so again that you can send us via email or just like I put it in the Google Classroom. I all already put the the link for the evaluation in the Google Classroom as well. You can find it there. And so now I would like to come to the end of the session of this uh, international training course. Um, again, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Banchak and Yun for closing remarks of this international training course on behalf of the Irrigation Engineering Department, Faculty of Engineering at Kompensan Campus, Kasesan University. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Banchak. Again, actually, I have a good time, you know, to have. Share experience with you, you know, in the last two weeks, you know, on this uh, training course. You know. Unfortunately, we are not can be face to face together, you know, because of uh, we have a lot in common, you know, we have a lot to share, you know, and now from this uh, training, we we have a. Learn something from us, but of course, it will be even much greater if we can learn something from you. But unfortunately, you cannot be here, so it, it could be maybe sometime in the future that we can have that. Because for us, you know, for this agriculture and water development, we go fairly long, long distance. You know, for for me myself and our group, you know, we are we are going forward from we have no institution until we have institution. And we have no recognition, and now we have more recognition, and we can start from we have we have insufficient knowledge, and now we have sufficient knowledge. You know, we can start from we have, let's say, not so much technology, and up to now we have kind of mature technology. You know, to to share or to use, and <laughs> I think it depends on all of us. You know, to put all of them together. You know, which one. Is suitable for uh, your environment and uh, your, let's say, uh, social constraint and so many other things. But hopefully, the the content of overall, you know, will be beneficial for for all of you within us and be actually happy, you know, to hear from you more in in the future, like Dr. Kevra mentioned earlier. Today, that if possible, you know, we could be uh, really willing to see you uh, in the future, you know, or maybe some of you may apply okay, or whatever, you know. But but ho hopefully, the uh, even though this one is on the the online system, but maybe you can learn something and you can catch up something and to implement, you know. But our Side, you know, the Kaseya University and the Department of Irrigation Engineering will be much more happy if really some of this can be implemented or used. If you have some good story 
or success story, it would be really nice for you to share back to us. You know, I would think we will keep the kind of contract uh, we, you know, together. So good to have you all with us and thank you for your participation, you know, and uh, we are grateful to share our experience with you. And thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Mancha, and thank you very much for all uh, all participants. And I uh, hope that if it is possible for the maybe next year or next two years that the situation is better, and also we still have just like uh, the on-site course, if you want to join or your co-workers want to join with us, we are very welcome. So I would like to say thank you and say goodbyes now. And don't forget to visit our website and have anything you can send us an email. Thank you very much. And goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.